Good evening, good evening, guys. Welcome, welcome to this evening's class. This evening we'll be doing market phases. So if you're with me, just give me a yes in the chat box. Just let me know that you're with me and you're ready. All right, I see one yes came through. I see some more people are coming in. Wonderful, wonderful. I see some more yeses coming through. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I know some of you may be on your mobile, so it may be a little bit difficult, but thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I see we're getting double DSs. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, all right, let's try to jump into this evening's class. Okay. So we're doing market phases and we need to make sure that we know the market condition that we trade, right? So know the market condition you trade. That is one thing that we need to make sure that we take into consideration. So what is a market phase? A market phase is basically where the instrument traded is trading in one part of the Elliott wave cycle. Now, there are three market phases. The first market phase, this one is kind of popular because back in the days, most stock markets were in the impulsive phase and a lot of people made a lot of money um, when the markets were in the impulsive phase. We still have some markets in the impulsive phase, right? So the impulsive phase, this is where the market is moving in five, three, five, three, five. And when I say five, three, five, what I mean is a five wave impulse, a three wave correction, another five wave impulse, a three wave correction, then another five wave impulse. And, and as some of you may know, we have the ABC correction, which is another three wave corrective uh, move. Okay. Now we will get this type of movement without violating the impulsive, the impulse rules. Okay. So it's also referred to as a trending phase. And I think this may be more popular um, with um, especially new traders. Um, there's always mention of trends and you know, the market's trending. So it's a trending phase, okay? Now, the next phase that we can see is called the corrective phase. Now, this is where the market's trading in three waves. So it's trading in a three wave corrective cycle. And in most cases you may find a three, three, three. That's the type of wave structures that you will get. Okay. So that will be some um, very big wave structures. Okay. Even on the lower time frames, you can find them um, moving in three, 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 or maybe other combinations, but like, like uh, five, three, uh, three, <clears throat> which is still going to create a three wave correction. Okay. Uh, we have the next cycle, which is the impulsive corrective cycle. So this is this one is more like a mix of the two, and uh, this is where you find that the market is trading in three waves. Either you can find the ABC or the AB equals C, AB equals CD corrective cycles. Um, uh, this impulsive corrective. Uh, this is impulsive corrective because price is moving in either uh, we'll get uh, a, a wave combination of three 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 or three three five or five three three or five three five three five um, but you will find violations in the impulse rules okay for example <clears throat> when the price is moving in three, five, sorry, five, three, five, three, five. You can find that um, in wave, in wave uh, four, it can violate the price area of wave one. Okay, so you can find that type of violation. And you can find that type of violation in um, each of the five waves, okay? 
Um, market phases can also be discovered by adjusting the chart time frame in order to see most or all of the price data to be able to identify which of the three phases the instrument is in. This way, you can trade it accordingly, okay? So let's look at an example of the impulsive phase. So this is the S&P 500. And if you look at this carefully, you can see that this is moving very impulsively. It's trending, right? So you can see this is trending to the upside. All right, so this is something that we would look at and call this an impulsive phase. Um, if we look at these wave structures, I'm sure that we can find um, five, three, five, three, five, and so on, okay? So this is a lovely example of an impulsive phase, okay? The next example we have here is the corrective phase. And you can look at this clearly and see that the market's just going flat, it's just sideways. Now this uh, shows us an example from around 2015 or so, right? So you can see from 2015 to 2021, the market's just flat. So we should be aware, well, I think so most of you would be aware that there are traders who invest in the market and uh, they invest more in the range of the market. So if you're looking at such a market and you want to invest long term, I mean, these are the areas that you're looking to sell at the tops. And these are the areas that you're looking to buy at the bottoms, right? Because you know that over time, it's going to go back to the area of the top. So, I mean, sometimes if you look at this and you're, let's say you're over here and you're looking to get involved in the market, I mean, come on, it's obvious that from this area, we will expect soon that the price will start going to the downside, okay? And there is nothing that says that it can't happen right in this area that the price starts to trend all the way down, okay? Because if you look at the history, you can see that that's just how the market's moving. It's moving down, especially if you look at this area, you have a very strong move down, one, two, three, and this is one, two, three. You got this move down here. So this completes a five wave move down. So this could still be one and this starts to go up. This could make three. So you get one move up, you get a correction, another move up causing three waves up then drop again. Okay, so we understand that this is potentially an area where we can see the price go back to the downside. Okay, it can even drop from this area, as I said, it can just start start coming down, make a three wave correction here, and then can go up again. Okay. So this is something that you can look at. If you're someone who wants to invest in the market, these are options that you can look at. Um, remember, um, we are not financial advisors. Everything we do here is for educational purposes only. Okay, so trade your strategy, but understand the market phases that exist so that you can trade your strategies more efficiently. Okay, all right. So the next market phase that we have here is the impulsive corrective phase. Now the impulsive corrective phase is where you can find it the price pulsing in one direction, then you get the correction. And in the impulsive cycle, you would find that there is violations in the Elliott wave theory. Okay, so for example, just by looking at this, this could be one, this could be two, this entire wave could be three, this could be four, and this could be five, right? So this could be one, two, this could be three here. And this entire thing here could be four and then you get five, right? But as you can see, looking at it, it's a bit choppy, a bit messy, okay? But this is impulsive corrective. And this, we're getting a corrective cycle here. Um, this corrective cycle is expected to maybe make another move to the upside at some point. 
Is it going to make that move now? Not necessarily sure if that's going to happen, but from what I see, this move that we're getting now is corrective, which means it should be going down. Okay, so this at some point will be coming back to the downside. Okay. All right, so any questions? Is there anything that you guys are not too clear on? Is, are there any instruments you'd like me to look at? Um, to maybe try to locate some of these different market phases. Okay, I see Samantha says NES. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go over to the NES. I'm assuming that's NAS 100. Uh, let's see here. Oops. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can find that quickly. Okay. Am I on the right instrument? Yes, okay, wonderful. So for me to identify what market phase are we in here, I can just go over to the monthly. And what do you think this is? What phase do you think we're in right now? You guys tell me. No takers? No one knows what phase this is? All right, I see Samantha says impulsive. And I would say you're correct. We're in a trending phase. Price is trending to the upside. And this is the type of market that a lot of investors love. Because once you see price give an aggressive pullback, for example, like, you know, something like this or something like this or this, you know, that's your buying opportunity. That's where you get into the market and you hold for dear life and just let the price do what it has to do. Also remember, you're not going to just jump into the market because you see that the price pulled back. You would have to use your different uh, methods. Some of us use support and resistance. Some of us use the Elliott wave theory. Um, a lot of us use many different techniques. Okay, so whenever you enter the market, make sure that you have a valid reason to enter the market. Okay, don't just jump in. Because yes, this is a trending phase, but at some point, it's going to make a bigger correction. Okay, at some point, it's going to do something like this, bigger correction to correct most of this move to the upside, because at some point, it's going to finish a five wave cycle. And a three wave correction will be due, which is ABC, will be due. Okay, so it may not be as small as these, it may be bigger. And you need to make sure that you allow for that to happen so that you can catch the next big wave like this to the upside. Okay, that is just the nature of the markets. All right. Any other instruments you guys would like us to look at? Any comments, any opinions? Feel free, ask as much questions as you like. This is the time to get your questions answered. I'm giving you guys a few seconds to type up your questions. Okay, I see UJ. Okay, let's try that. Okay. USDJBY, I have that's I, sh I should have that somewhere in here, but okay, here it is. Moving too fast, couldn't see it. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at US dollar, <clears throat> excuse me, Japanese yen. Okay, so what do you guys think this is? 
Is this impulsive? Is this corrective? Is this impulsive corrective? What do you think it is? This is from 1994. Okay, um, let's see here. Nolan says, uh, I'm just taking it all in. I'm so new to this, okay. <laughs> Mark says, any time frame uh, or higher time frame to get a good look at something like this? Yes, you go to the higher time frame. So the higher time frame you go to, the clearer it becomes. Okay, one second. Let me just move these away. Oops. Yeah, so the higher the time frame that you go to, the clearer it shows. I mean, if you go to like the weekly, I mean, you, you get so much data. It's not that bad on the weekly either. You go down to the daily. It's so many, so many more candles and you're going to have to, you know, scroll and stuff. So it's difficult to tell. So you go to the higher time frame, like let's say weekly, monthly, so that you can see all of the data in front of your screen like this. You just compress it to the point where you can see all of the data. Okay. And for example, I'm just going to show you. If I want to use, let's say, the Elliott wave theory, I mark this as my low, right? Then I'm going to come over here and mark this as my high, right? If I'm looking at this from the Elliott wave point of view, I can see here clearly this is an impulse. It is, it looks corrective impulsive. It is corrective impulsive to the upside because this is the impulsive side of the corrective wave. Okay. So this is impulsive corrective. And I can see one, I can see two. I can look at this here. I can see one, two, three, or this could even be one, two, three like this, right? So this could be a uh, regular flat pattern, which I would draw like this, mark this as the low, and I mark this here as the high. And I can look at this and say, this is a regular flat. Some, some traders mark it like this, right? Some of you may call this a wedge, right? <laughs> so you see how some patterns may fall into another category simply because of how traders identify it, right? So some traders may identify this as a wedge, whereas I may look at this and say that, you know, this is a regular flat pattern, okay? So with this being a correction inside here, I mean, what I like to do is I like to use measured moves, right? So if I measure the first wave of the correction and I project it after the B wave, if I'm to call this A, B, C, then this is one, two, three. And I put this wave projection over here. I know where this wave is gonna end, right in this area, see? So <clears throat> in most cases, it would mean that my interpretation is correct. And this indeed is three waves, one, two, three, like this. And then we get the next wave down. So if this is three waves, right, what do you expect to happen next? We're going to expect this wave. That wave, we're going to expect that wave to come from this one, right? And as you can see, we are going to the upside. It did stop and give a correction. If you understand the Elliott wave theory, you're going to come over here and say, okay, this looks like potentially a flat. Just mark the low, mark the high, because you can see them, okay? But if you just had, uh, let's put this over. If you just had this information, you would not know what to expect really, right? But the way in which we would interpret this, we would say that this is corrective impulse down. This is a strong move up. So this is a corrective impulse up as well. So if this is impulsive, then at some point we're going to expect a correction, either when it hits the high or it may stop short somewhere inside and make a correction. Okay, and as you can see, it did stop short somewhere inside. It did make a correction. It gave us one give us two, give us three. 
then it gave us this corrective wave. So this is W, X, Y, this is X. And all of this looks like Z. Okay, so all of this looks like Z. So W, X, Y, X, we got Z, which is one, two, three. Okay, so that is W, X, Y, Z. And we start making another move to the upside. So if you go into this wave, you can see impulse. Though, as if you look at it, you can see it's just basically two candles. So we can clearly see this is a three wave move up, right? Because of the nature of the candles, it's two candles. So most likely it's going to be three waves to the upside, at least from this view, okay? Then we get this corrective formation here. And then we're getting another wave to the upside, okay? How far is this next wave going to go? because I love using market geometry. I measure this wave and I project it at the end of this one. Now, the beauty of this is understanding where the correction ends. So that's another reason why it's good to know the different corrective formations like W, X, Y, this is X and this is Z like this, okay? So if you understand the different types of corrective formations, you can know or have a very good idea where the correction should end and where the next wave should start. So where you're getting into a trade should always be where the next wave should start. You're not looking to get into a trade in the middle of a wave. You're looking to get into the trade at the end of a wave or at the beginning of a wave, okay? So we'll expect this to get up to this level, okay? At some point, it's not gonna get there right away. It's gonna take some time and it's not gonna be an easy ride, okay? So for example, just looking at this piece here, this is one, two, I'm going to expect some sort of flat pattern inside of that. I'm going to expect something like this. Right now, it doesn't mean it has to um, come down right away here because remember we have running flex, so this could extend, extend a little bit higher and then give us that move down. But we will look for the measured move. It doesn't have to be a measured move. It could be longer. It could be shorter. It could be measured. Okay, so something like that at some point. If it comes here, or it could go, comes a little bit higher, but we will expect that move down at some point. Okay, most times it will come when price comes and hits the high. So I'll expect at some point soon, we will get price starting to come back to the downside. Okay. All right, my throat's running a little dry. <laughs> so at some point, we're going to expect price to come to the downside, and that will give us, you know, some more reason to buy this. All right, so we look to buy this up to this level. Once it gets up to this level, what are we gonna do? Once it gets up to this level, we will expect, so this is one, this is two, this is three. We will then expect this wave to repeat itself like that, back to the downside. So, right, from here, or the price will be over here somewhere. So back to the downside to around this level. When the price gets to this level, what will we expect? Using market geometry, we measure this wave. Okay, one second, I wanna, good. Measure that wave, project it over here. And that's what we'll expect. See, this is the area you're looking to get to. And this is the area we'll get to, right over here. See, that is just what we will expect from price. That is just how it moves. I mean, this formation could still evolve and change into some other formation, but as it looks now, this is the type of formation that we can expect, okay? So if we're buying, we're only buying back to this level. And then we'll wait to see what happens. If we get a reason to sell, we try to sell it back for the measurement of this wave. 
on the third wave, it's not always wise to try to take the entire wave. It's good to maybe take like half or three quarters of the wave, okay? And then you get out. Because in the third wave, it could always change. It could always evolve, okay? Price loves to evolve in the third wave. Loves to give you variations. All right. So, <clears throat> any other instruments you guys would like us to look at? So far, we found impulsive, we found corrective. What else are we looking for? We found impulsive corrective as well. I think we did one with impulsive corrective, right? Okay. <laughs> Nolan says, wow, this is good stuff. So much to learn. Yeah, I mean, if you're more on the investing side, the higher time premium is where you really need to trade because you're looking for more, more sniper entries, I should say. You're looking for an area that when you enter at that point, it's going to be more in your favor. I mean, it's never really wise to be entering the market in the middle, like in the middle of a formation. In these areas here, you don't want to enter here. Look what happens in this area. It just goes up and down, up and down. It creates different types of corrections in this area. This area is going to be a very volatile area. Up and down swings. It's going to wear you out. So you want to go into the market at the tops and at the bottoms. You're always looking to sell the highs, buy the lows. You need to be able to identify the lows and identify the highs. That's the only way that you can make wise choices. So if you understand the wave theory, you would understand what is a wave. And as I've told you guys, one wave is going to be a five wave wave count or a three wave wave count. Okay. So you look at the market and you, are, you try to analyze what wave structures you're looking at. It's not always very clear, like just by looking at it, it's not always very clear to everyone. For example, I mean, just looking at this piece here, it doesn't seem very clear to everyone, right? It really doesn't seem clear to everyone. But if I look at this carefully, Let me see here. This one just looks like, uh, yeah, this one is a bit on the aggressive side. So it's a bit, it's a bit ticklish and it's not always going to be very clear to everyone, but I would look at this one and I would say that this, this piece over here is potentially a three wave move like that. Right. And this is my final wave up which is going to come with this. All right, so this is one, this is two, this is three. Okay. And this is going to be one. This is a correction over here. So somewhere here, two, this is three. All right, so this is one, two, three. And this is our bigger correction. And we get one, two, three. Right, smaller wave. So this is more like an A, B, C type correction where you get one long wave, one short wave, okay? It's always good when you can identify the corrections because once you can identify the corrections, it gives you that edge where you will have an idea where the correction should end because you understand the nature of the correction, you understand the pattern you're looking at, so you can make projections. So if you find out where the waves in the pattern are going to end or are going to start, then you can take action at those points. Okay. Sometimes 
I mean, if you're using a, a very tight stop, sometimes the market makers can stop you out before they go in your direction. But if you know that that is the direction that the price should be going in because of your technical analysis, then you're going to be um, able to catch that wave. Eventually, it will come. Okay? And it's most times it comes when you least expect it to come. Okay? Any other questions, guys? Anything else you guys would like me to take a look at? Any other pairs you'd like me to take a look at? We can take a look at one more pair. Oh, I see a question here. Um, one second, one second. <clears throat> I see Pauline was asking, please review how to determine the entry. Okay, so when it comes to entering a market like this, right, when it comes to entering a market like this, you want to make sure that you're entering at the lows, right? Because these are the safest areas to buy and the highs are the safest areas to sell, okay? So you know the saying, sell high, buy low? This is basically what it means. You sell when the market's on the high side, you buy when the market's on the low side, okay? But if you only had this one wave, selling, not an option. Okay, because you won't be sure if it's going to come down. So in a case like that, you're going to have to look for some reason to give you some sort of hint that the market's about to come down. Okay, but once the market comes down and retest the low, definitely that's where you are finding your sweet spot. Once the market makes a high, then it comes and retests a low. This is where you want to take some sort of action. Okay, you want to buy in a situation like this. Now, for those of you who are support and resistance traders, then yeah, this would be considered to be support, right? Now, I've always told you guys that I look at support and resistance within pattern formation. Okay, so that's how I look at support and resistance. So that's why I would say that this is going to be a support area because it's a low, okay? This is gonna be a resistance area. Why? Because it's a high. Okay, inside here, this is a low, this is a high. See, support, price bounce. This one did not reach the high again. The price turned and went to the downside. And this is fine. If you understand uh, trend analysis, then you could have created a trend line at some point. Now, in cases like this, where it's a little bit difficult to draw your trend, I know that it's taught to draw your, your uptrend is from the low to the higher low, right? But we can actually do it like this in some cases where it's not very clear, right? You look for the highest high and you just connect them together like that. Then you take that, you just bring this down like this. See, perfect. Perfect trend. So this way you're sure of what you're looking at. So you know this is some sort of flag to the upside, some sort of channel. And on the break of that, you're looking for a reason to sell. Some of us like to sell on the break. Some of us like to allow it to break out and then give a correction and then we sell the break of the new correction that happens below this channel break, okay? So that could be reasons for entering inside of this type of corrective formation. Okay, you can trade or get into trades because you know that, okay, I'm expecting this leg. This is one, two, three. This is telling me we have a cell set up here. I can go for the next leg. This is telling me that this wave is over. At least potentially over because this could have easily turned into this. It could have easily turned into a flat.
where you see one, two, three, you get one, two, three up. It comes down one, two, three. It could even do after three, make four and five, and then go right back up. Okay, because remember this wave is not completed over here. We don't have a full extension. Okay, but as I said, sometimes we won't have a full extension because we have alternating waves, we have um, truncated waves, we have extended waves. So in the third wave, it could become tricky in a lot of cases. The wave could come short, could come long, it could be truncated. So you gotta look out for situations like that. So you just look for your reasons to sell, look for your reasons to buy. This would have been a reason to sell. This channel to the upside, the break of it, definitely you wanna sell it. Where you would take your profit? Back to this low, of course, because this is where this flat pattern should end, right? Or you measure this wave and you project that distance. And whenever it makes that distance, you exit, all right? And then you look for a reason to try to go long because you'd be trying to catch this wave. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, in a lot of cases, we are going to try to catch this wave somewhere here. Once it, especially once it hits the low, we're going to try to catch that wave. But the price doesn't go; it comes back and hits the, the, the stop. When you get stopped out, you're probably looking to try to buy it again. But that is a bad approach, because if you're stopped out, your stop should tell you that the price is not going up anymore. It's looking to come down. So at that point, you're no longer looking to buy, you're looking to sell because the price has changed direction. And in a lot of cases, we'd look at that and we'd say that that is an X wave, right? So that's X. This measured move came and the price starts to go up, but failed, came back, broke the low, that's X. So this wave is done. So we can look at that and say that's a truncated wave. That wave up is done and, <clears throat> excuse me, and the price starts to fall. Okay, so in a case like that, when the price starts to fall, some of us are going to have trouble placing our stop. So the stop would go above the um, current swing, right? So it would go above the current swing. When I say the current swing, I mean the swing that completed a corrective formation. Okay, so that's where you put your stop. You enter short on the break of the low, and you're going short. Okay, so price comes down, price bounces here. When the price comes and hits that low, definitely you want to exit. And it's still not very wise entering so close to this um, support area here. Okay, so you would not want to enter so close to this support area. This is very dangerous. So if the price pushes up, it comes back and breaks the low, it fails, then you can look to get involved in another trade, but you have to understand what you're looking at. This looks like one, two, three. You get a correction here and you get one, two, three, right? So this is three, 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 right? So this is a long wave down. And then if this is one wave, you get another correction here, another wave down like that. So this was not necessarily very easy to tell that that's what, what, that's what was going to happen. Because you have a bullish formation that kept extending, extending, extending itself to the downside. And that would have caused a lot of people buying and getting stopped out, buying and getting stopped out until we get to this point. The market makers do stuff like that. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Let me go through the chat box. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I see Gris is asking, what moving average am I using? Okay, the moving average I'm using is a 200 point, right? So as you can see here, it's a regular moving average, 200 period moving average, okay? I find that the reason, well, my reason for having the 200 period moving average on, I find that it is one of the most powerful moving averages that exist. In most cases, 
once the price touches the 200 period moving average, and I'm not looking at it on the um, weekly or monthly or whatnot, I'm looking at it on the one hour time frame, the 15 minute time frame, the four hour time frame. Once price touches this moving average on those time frames, you generally will get a reaction. Okay, you will see something happen. Either the price will bounce off it, go in the opposite direction, but you will see some sort of reaction. Okay, any other questions? Anything else, guys? All right. Okay, guys. I'm not getting any more questions. You guys seem to be all set. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, thank you so much for your time, guys. I'll bring this class to an end. This was indeed a very simple class. Um, I hope that this helps you guys a lot. Uh, please pay attention to your market phases. It would help you a great deal, especially if you're looking to swing trade or if you're looking to invest long term in some sort of instrument. Okay, so pay attention to the market phase and that can help you to find yourself a great entry and a great exit. Okay. Uh, Mark says, I'll be practicing more to catch these. <laughs> You're most welcome, Mark, most welcome. Yes, you guys can try them out. Try them out on some demo accounts, okay? You know, open some trades, try to hold them long term, see how it works out. All right, so thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys in our next class. Bye-bye for now.